right, we are here at Blank Park Zoo, and you're looking at a live shot of our unnamed rhino calf born on April 5th, and uh, joining me today, uh, we have three people that are very instrumental in taking care of the rhino calf, and first up is Dr. Olds, and Dr. Olds, um, why don't we just start, uh, could you give us some, maybe the major stats of the rhino calf when she was born and how much she weighs and that sort of thing? So our, our little rhino calf is a week old today. So she was born last week on uh, Friday afternoon at about 424, I think, in the afternoon. Um, the, preg or the delivery went very smoothly, and we did her baby physical on Sunday morning. And on Sunday, she weighed 112 pounds, so she's a big girl. And rhinos can gain a lot of weight even every day. How, mu how much do you think uh, she might be weighing now? Uh, it's hard for me to say, but I would guess we're probably, you know, 130 maybe pounds. Um, they, they do grow quickly. Um, mom's milk has got a lot of nutrients in it, so she's going to keep growing very fast. And our previous rhino calf, Tumani, she started out at 80 pounds. So this calf's a lot bigger, but by her first birthday, she was nearly 1,000. So there's a lot of growing in the first year, right? There's a lot of growing in the first, actually through third years, they're um, reaching adult size. So yeah, she'll, she'll get a lot bigger as she continues to grow, but uh, she's going to remain to be much smaller than her parents. So she's going to be in that baby stage for a couple years here. And um, right there, Mama stepped in front of her right now. And so we're going to go to a different shot here so you can see both of them um what 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 is it like you know 15 to 17 months I'll, there's probably got to be a lot of planning to go uh ahead of time what did we do to prepare for this birth from a veterinary standpoint so from the veterinary standpoint we've been monitoring ayana as soon as we knew that breeding occurred so um, we are very fortunate that our keepers have a great relationship with these animals and they have been trained to participate in their health care and so uh, we have done training for ultrasounds and so we were able to do ultrasounds very early in the pregnancy um, trying to confirm that she was pregnant and then she's also trained to have blood collected and so we've been doing blood work on her um, frequently to monitor her hormone levels to make sure that the pregnancy was stable and here in this last month or two, she's been allowing us to collect blood once or twice a week so that we could monitor those hormone levels and try to know that the pregnancy was healthy, but also hoping to try to predict when this baby was going to arrive. And uh, let's talk about that neonatal exam we did on Sunday. And I've sort of described it as a NASCAR pit stop. I mean, it's just everyone had a role. There was like maybe 10 people involved. Yeah. Well, talk a little bit about that. So uh, one of the things we want to do, because it is very stressful for mom to take that baby away, so we want to make sure that we are quick and efficient um, when we perform an examination like this so that we are separating mom and baby for the shortest period of time. So what we did ahead of time was plan it out and made sure that everyone knew exactly what their role was in this, in this procedure. And so we had, uh, Shalini was one of the people involved in just getting Ayana to move um, out of the stall so that we could get to the baby. And then uh, another keeper came in and made sure the door was closed so that once Ayana left that space, um, we could get to the baby. And then others went in and got a hold of the baby and held her still so that uh, Dr. Gall and I could perform her examination. And so I didn't go back and review the footage, but I think it, we were under two minutes uh, in and out, and so uh, there's a great picture of Dr. Gall putting her on the scale at the very end of the procedure, so we nominated him to lift her up and hold her on the scale, but it did take three people to just to hold her still for that examination, so it was, uh, was quite the process, but it was very smooth, and we accomplished all of our goals, and then as soon as we got her back with Ayana, everything was Hunky dory again. So Ayana forgave us for doing that. She was uh, she came right back up to us and so didn't have any hard feelings afterwards. So yeah, she was, was she was like sort of like a a, a a steam engine that was not happy. Right is what it yes. reminded me of. Yes, yeah. she was she was definitely letting us know that she was unhappy with us grabbing her baby. Um, and uh, but she again she forgave us afterwards. So once we got those two back together, she was great. 
So all indications that she's a healthy baby at this yeah, point. Yeah, on her physical exam and then just watching her, what you see her doing every day. I mean, she's playful. She's energetic. Uh, she's growing. So we have all indicators that she's a healthy young girl. And sleeping at the right times, too. And, you know, Apparently, I mean when we turn the camera on, it's time to sleep. That's right? what babies do. They That's when they do their most growing is when, they're, when they nap. So, you know, just like all babies, she eats, she plays, and she sleeps really hard. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks so much for joining us, and you, you, you have to get back to an armadillo. And That's right. <laughs> I'm going to head over to the armadillo, but I, I think you're going to talk to the people that uh, do more of the day-to-day, -day, you know, yeah. hero work. So um, she's, a, she's a great girl, and we're all really excited. Well, that's really great. Now, we're going to, uh, while we switch guests here, we're going to watch a video um, that is about rhino conservation. Or actually, let's let's – watch the milestone video and this video is just all the milestones of the birth and so let's watch that now And they're just within, you know, just an hour or so. She's standing and nursing. And what do you think of that, Shannon? That's amazing. Those are all milestones that we want to see. Um, and the fact that they happen so quickly just proves that she is such a healthy and uh, happy little girl. Yeah, Shannon McKinney, our director of animal care, is joining us now. And um, Shannon, you, you've uh, worked at the zoo for a long time. Uh, you spent a long time being the bird supervisor, bird and reptile supervisor, and, and about, what, a year or so ago you stepped into this role. And w what's it like now to have, like, a major birth of, I guess you were here for the lion cubs, but also now rhino calf? Uh, it's amazing to be able to contribute to these species that are on the brink of extinction and are struggling in the wild. So being a part of that team that is helping save species and each and every birth is a mark towards that and is helping us achieve that, it's an awesome feeling and it makes me feel very fortunate and very appreciative of my role here at Blank Fork Zoo. Um, what's it been like just to be uh, around the rhino? I mean, y you're one of the first people that, that got to see the rhino calf, I'm sure. And tell us what it was like the first time you got to see her. Oh, it was amazing. Um, she's absolutely adorable. Uh, Mom was fairly calm. Again, it's one of those I've been here for a long time, so I have a good relationship with the rhinos. Not as good as the keepers by any means, but um, Ayana was nice and calm with our presence. And uh, it was just, it's an undescribable feeling to be able to see such a rare and endangered animal being, you know, shortly after it's been born. And, and it's an honor. Yeah, and we're, we're getting some uh, questions on Facebook, and someone's asking, when will the calf be on display? So let's go ahead and answer that question. All right, so for us, the most important thing is, of course, the mother-baby bond. And uh, we are not giving any timelines as to when the baby will be displayed because we are taking all of our cues from Ayana. We want to make sure that when we're ready to do that, Ayana is completely comfortable with that. Um, and that she's completely comfortable with the baby being in the limelight um, because I anticipate the baby will get a lot of attention uh, once she is on display. So we want to make sure that um, we're respecting that bond and we're respecting Ayana and her time with the baby. So at this time, we are not giving any set timelines. Um, we're just very carefully watching Ayana and all of her, what signals she's telling us about uh, the baby and her comfortability with sharing the baby with the world. So uh, are you up to speed on how we're going to name 
uh, the, the cast. I am. Can you talk about that? I would love to. So right now, you can go onto our website, and you can donate either $50 for one name suggestion or $100 for three name suggestions. Um, we are asking that they are of African origins, just because we want to we want to stick with that trend with our population. Um, but on April 21st, we'll go ahead and from those names, we'll narrow it down. And then by April 26th, we should be able to announce the winner. Yeah, and so the public, once we get those finalists, the public will be able to vote. Yep. So even if you don't donate, we, we do hope you do. We are a nonprofit, so every dollar we raise here goes towards the animals. And, and in fact, every a portion of every dollar you spend here or we raise here at Blank Park Zoo goes to help save animals in the wild. So um, a statistic I saw the other day, and I don't know if you've heard this yet, but um, we were looking at the population of uh, eastern black rhinos in the United States, in North America, and there's about 50 in North America. And so Blank Park Zoo has four of them. So we have about 10% of the entire population uh, in uh, North America. And of the captive uh, rhinos in, in managing human care, um, there's about 150 worldwide. So we have about 3 or 4%. Um, and then wild rhinos in their natural habitat, about 800. Yeah, it's, it's roughly around 800, give or take. So, I mean, when you look at those totals, we're looking at less than 1,000 eastern black rhinos left on the planet. Um, and so to be at Blank Park Zoo and to have four of those awesome individuals, two of which who are amazing parents and are doing a great job at uh, making these beautiful, strong, healthy babies, uh, it's a great honor, and it's it's something that will really help contribute to that population and saving that species. Mm -hmm. Any l last words before you get back to work? Um, just the, when we are ready for our baby rhino to be in the limelight, I hope that everyone takes the opportunity to come and see her. And as you said, Ryan, um, every time you come to the zoo, every time you spend money at the zoo, a portion of every single dollar goes back into the wild, into saving uh, wildlife and to saving these beautiful amazing species as well as the wild spaces that they live in and so I really just encourage everyone to uh, you know come and see her and help us support you know protecting these animals and and saving them uh, in the wild all right she's getting up now she was taking a little nap so maybe she, she right before the webcast uh, you guys probably won't believe me but she was running around <laughs> Like a crazy woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> having lots playing. of fun. And now she's up, and it's probably time for nursing, right? Oh, yeah. Yep, we yep. got hungry. It's time time, time for, for lunch. And so, well, thanks so much for joining us, Shannon. Thank and you. And we're going to talk to uh, Shalini, who is a zookeeper here at Blank Park Zoo. She's one of the lucky zookeepers who gets to gets to um, work with our rhinos. And Shalini, uh, what has it been like this past week uh, working with the rhinos? It's been absolutely incredible. Um, I was lucky here to be for Tumani's birth as well. Um, and that was a few years ago. And just for us to come in and just see this little bundle of joy every day is just awesome. And yeah, she's been doing absolutely well. It's for us, like the old keepers as well as well as the new keepers, it's just awesome to see her um, running around, being playful, but also displaying different rhino behaviors. You know, she is already defecating where mom's defecating, and she's doing her whole little kickback motion that mom does. Um, Ayana's been such a great mom, letting um, you know, having her standing still for nursing, but giving her a rest. Um, with this calf, she seems a bit more chill than Tamani. Tamani, if mom left four feet away from her, we'd already hear screaming and Ayana coming back to her. There's been multiple times where baby's in one stall and mom's in the other, and I think that's just really great too. Both of them are been really comfortable in their space, and they kind of, you know, we're lucky that we have such strong bonds with them. They trust us, and they're really comfortable around us as well. Um, we're going to watch some video because I, I recorded some video uh and I want you just to get your take on mm -hmm. what she's doing here. Okay. This was a couple of days ago, and uh, she w it looked like she was having fun <laughs> doing rhino things. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to play it here. And it, just look up at the screen and tell us what she's, what she's doing there. Yeah, so she's having a lot of fun with that hay. And, you know, that 
I feel like she's like displaying natural behaviors. You know, they'll use eventually their humongous heads and their horns, moving things around. A lot of times before they start wallowing, which is basically them getting ready to roll around the mud, they'll kind of move things out of the way and start. And just little things like this is just so incredible to watch. And you could just tell which are innate behaviors, which ones learn from mom. Um, she's already, yeah, like been playful and rolling around in the hay. Um, there was this morning, you know, Ayana was just laying there and she was already trying to spar with her mm -hmm. head and face and things like that. So it's just great to see and it's important to see too because it kind of just adds to the development of the calf. Yeah, and I have another video here. This was, uh, again, a couple of days ago, and maybe some of that sparring behavior you were talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, it's and you know, mom kind of stays there. Sometimes she kind of pushes back, but it kind of encourages her, you know, to play. But these are everything that's going to come um, important when she is older. And, yeah, you know, hopefully. she would need to learn how to defend herself, right? Oh, yep, yeah. yep. And it's, yeah, it's it's natural for them to spar. Like, even Ayana and Keanu will spar all the time and things. And, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's freaking adorable to see but it's also their natural behavior <laughs> we're gonna go back to live video here and again she's not running around like we were hoping at this time of day that's why mm -hmm. we chose this time but mm -hmm. you know you you get what you get when you're working with animals um oh, yeah. uh you know what are some of the things i mean you do to prepare i notice you know normally you don't have straw in the in the in the stalls uh, mm -hmm. But you do for the baby. What are some of the other things you do to prepare for a baby rhino? Yeah, so in the rhino barn, we have our stalls have the um, solid walls, but we also have um, opened up bars. And, you know, when you're talking about an 80-pound baby, it's easy for even us to kind of slip through those bars. So we want to make sure all of that is secure. Um, right now, the calf is usually hanging next to mom. She doesn't venture out too much, but within the next week or so, we're definitely going to see her exploring her uh, space a little bit more. So when you guys come to the rhino barn, you'll probably see wood paneling along the bars, and that's just a protection, uh, making sure that we don't have any little rhino baby escapes, even though that would probably be the cutest animal escape we have here at the zoo. We just want to make sure uh, everyone's um, taken care of and in a confined area. Yeah, uh, someone's on Facebook's asking, mm -hmm. does the mom have a schedule for feeding? Uh, no, you'll typically see it every few hours, every two hours. Um, and Ayana's been great. Like, I was training her this morning in the stalls, and she completely stopped her training session. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And then I look down, and I see, like, the little calf nursing. So it's whenever she wants to, um, she'll come up and nurse from mom. Their mom wanted her to get up, and so <laughs> <laughs> gave her some uh, uh, gentle uh, <laughs> encouragement to get up. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, even um, if you guys see the milestone video, when we were all anticipating and waiting for her to get up, to Ayana was doing her best to help her. So she knows how how like how it goes now with her second pregnancy and birth. <laughs> how how is Tumani the first calf mm -hmm. dealing with this? Uh, have yeah. you noticed any behavior change there? Um, she, uh, I think, ma like majority of you guys know how much Tumani loved being in the spotlight even as a baby, and that's still the case now. And you know, of course, a lot of our attention has gone towards mom and baby. So Tumani has le letting us know if we're in the barn and we don't come see her that she's present and she is ready for attention as well. Um, as of right now, she has not been introduced to the calf or Ayana, um, but we're hoping once the baby is a little bit bigger, we are lucky to have those um, spaced out open wall space within the stalls, and it could be a great way for them to be howdied, which is um, an, a time where they could see each other and touch each other, but they don't have complete access to each other. And it's a good time for us to gauge how well Tumani interacts with the baby um, because eventually it would be awesome to be able to one day put them all together and be a small family unit. Well, that's all great information. Um, we t when we were talking with Dr. Olds, she talked about, uh, or, or, or maybe it was Shannon, but we talked about we weren't going to put them, you know, in with the public right away. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit what we're doing right now to prepare for the eventual 
um, public display? Yeah, so even when the first week that she was born, we were limited to how long even us keepers who work with her on a daily basis were in those stalls and around um, them um, just to give them their privacy. And like Shannon mentioned, it's very important to establish a strong connection between mom and baby. Um, right now we're doing soft um, kind of like intros with our keeper staff. So we'll have our volunteers and just um, other area departments come through, and this is just a few people at a time. Um, we still kind of give them their space, so they're still gonna, you know, kind of be against um, the walls or just uh, giving them a little bit of a um, space to watch them and things like that, and just seeing how Ayana interacts with everyone. So far, she's been really great. She's been a very calm mom. She still has her moments where she wants to get you know, um, protective and especially with keepers that don't often come through the area. But it would be a good way to just get used to different noises, sounds, um, people, just, you know, different um, kind of people and different keepers. And that way, when it is open to the public, it'll be a very calming presence for both um, pre like the rhinos and the public as well. Well, thanks so much mm -hmm. for doing that. Uh, another question from Facebook. Um, have any of the outdoor enclosures been baby proofed? Um, no. So what we will do and what we did with Tamani, once she is ready to go outside, um, the areas with big gaps, we just have huge logs. So we kind of baby proof it the best we can. And we will have keepers monitoring, um, different areas. But I mean, these guys within the first month are putting on pounds like every day. So she We'll be big enough where she won't really fit into a lot of different areas, but we'll be monitoring for that. We do the best baby proofing we can out there, but we'll make sure um, she's in a good weight and size before we kind of let her out there. But we're excited because she's already running around a little bit, so it'll be really fun to see a little baby rhino out there. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I know you got to get back and mm -hmm. uh, get busy uh, taking care of the rhinos, but... Thanks for joining us today, and we'll try to do a couple more of these before yeah. uh, we announce a name. Right now, go to blankparkzoo.com. You can watch a webcam. We'll have it up as just as much as we can. Um, click on animals and webcam, and you'll see the, the calf as, as much as we're able to get it up there. Um, and then also, while you're there, um suggest a name we need some names so oh, that yeah. we have a good selection to pick from mm -hmm. um i'm sure the keepers have some favorites but uh we want the we want the whole community to be involved in this process and so um plus we can raise some funds for <laughs> needed funds for the blank park zoo and um have some fun as well so uh until next time thanks for watching and uh keep watching the video on blankparkzoo.com